All right, for today's project, I'm building a cribbage board that opens up to store your playing cards and game pieces. I do have a set of plans on my website if you want to build some. Christmas is coming up and they do make a nice gift. Since all the parts are small, it's a lot safer to rip them to width before cutting them to their final short at length. So I started out ripping all the end caps to width. Then I set up a stop block on my miter gauge so I could quickly cut them to the same length. I repeated this process for the front and back pieces, first ripping them to width, then cutting them to length. At this point you may have figured out I'm making several boards all at once. Batching out operations like this saves a ton of time. I needed to cut a dado in the end caps to accept the bottom. I didn't want the dado to go all the way through or have an ugly hole in my end caps. So I measured in about a quarter inch for the router bit and set up stop blocks on each side giving me a starting and stopping point. Then I removed the stop blocks and routed a dado on the fronts and backs. Then I built a quick jig out of scrap plywood so I could quickly plunge the mortises into the side. Now if you don't have a domino, don't get your tidy whities all up in a bunch. You can still use a dowling jig or a drywall screw. I set the jig up with this little spacer block so I could slide it over to cut the mortises on the other end. The spacer block is the same width as the dado and bottom, so it keeps the mortise location centered no matter what end I'm working on. Then on the other end of the jig I set up to hold the pieces vertically so I could cut mortises on the end caps. Once I had the joinery cut, I milled the pieces for the bottom, sneaking up on the thickness little by little with each pass until it fits snugly in the dado. Then I set up a stop block and cut all the bottoms to length. One little problem, the router bit left a rounded over groove on the ends. So I set up a round over bit in the router and eased over the edges so each board would fit. This created a nice fit with a little gap for wood movement. Now it was time to make the dividers to hold the deck of cards in place. When I ripped them to width, I doubled the width I needed plus the thickness of a saw blade. To create the finger hole, I drilled the holes down the center of the board and did a little math to space them out appropriately. Then I ripped down the center of the board, separating them into two halves. And before cutting them to length, I rounded over the edges at the router table. I use the router table to round over the tops of the end caps. The block is used as a backer to prevent tear out. Finally, I cut shallow grooves in the bottom so it would be easy to install the dividers in the right place. It's a lot easier to sand the inside parts before assembly, so to make it easy to hold a bunch of small parts during sanding, I screwed strips of plywood to the bench and pinched the parts between them. This made sanding a lot easier and faster. I set up a little assembly line and glued up all the bases.
Then by the time I got to the last base being glued up, the first base was dry, so I went back and dropped the card holder dividers in. I cut and milled the lid pieces to size and started drilling out all the holes for the game board. There will be a template you can print out for the layout in the set of plans. Now I know not everyone has such a high tech egg beater drill like this, so if you prefer a more archaic method for drilling all the holes, I included an SVG file for your CNC machine. This batch is going to a local shop here in Colorado, so I laser engraved a little something to get the tourist's attention. I rounded over the front and back of the lid for two reasons. One, it's decorative, but also to allow clearance for the lid hinge to open. The lid will be hinged on a dowel pin, so I made up this quick little jig to mark the hole locations for the dowels. I clamped a sacrificial piece of wood on the back so the drill wouldn't blow out on the inside. When drilling into the lid itself, I used a 16th inch spacer to position the lid. That space allows the lid to open freely without binding. Before final assembly, I pre-finished everything. Then I drove a short section of dowel to pin the lid and glued it in place with some CA glue. Thank you for making it to the end. If you'd like to see what goes on in my shop, give me a follow over on Instagram. And of course, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when the next video comes out.